name's Tiffany. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting to film a reading vlog. This is the first time I've done a reading vlog before. So I have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I don't really know much about this one. It's pretty much just about a woman who is documenting types of fairies. I've heard it's a bit of a slow fantasy but I'm in the mood for that so I kind of hope it is. <laughs> I'm kind of in the mood for that at the moment because here in Melbourne it's freezing. It's April. I don't know if it's supposed to be this cold. I have the heater on. I have my jacket on. It's really cold. <laughs> so I kind of just want to curl up with my cats and read a cozy book. So hopefully that fulfills it. This will be spoiler free. If I start getting too spoilery I will let you know. So I'm just coming in with a reading update. I did start with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I am really liking this at the moment. Um, it's been really great. I feel like it definitely has those cozy vibes that I was after. 
I think from what I've seen people say about this book is that it's slow in the beginning and then it picks up later on. I really haven't found that at all. I feel like there's quite a lot going on in the beginning of the book. I am currently on page 97. Just in the first 100 pages, I feel like we've learnt so much about the world, but it's been in such a natural way that it doesn't feel info dumpy or anything like that. It's really quite seamlessly woven into the story and I think that's probably because it's all told from the perspective of the main character writing in her journal. So they're told as kind of like journal entries but at the same time they are still snapshots of interactions with other people, those kinds of things. So at the beginning of the chapters it does feel like you're reading from their diary point of view but then as the chapter goes on it just feels like a normal story, it doesn't feel like a diary entry so it's nice to have kind of both. I have been tabbing a lot, I don't know if you can see. Mostly the tabs are vocabulary tabs. I like underlining and then writing definitions of words that I'm not sure what they mean to try and better my vocabulary because it's not amazing. Like it's okay, it's not the best. So yeah, there are a lot of tabs on vocab, but I've so far I've made comments just about the world itself. I usually put a key at the front of every book kind of like what each tab means what like what colors usually mean um i haven't included in there that um i've been including underlines like in pink yeah i don't know if you can see and pink is um the interactions between the main character and she has a colleague who ends up showing up they're really funny together and really cute and it's like it's very much a relationship of they hate each other but I feel like he's secretly in love with her and I feel like it's done really subtly because I know there's a lot of like enemies to lovers stories where I feel like it's so obvious that they actually like each other like the things that they say but the way it's been set up in this story is that it's set up as like oh yes he's charming he's charming to everyone but like I know all of his annoying traits that kind of stuff so it's set up in a way that you believe that the main character doesn't like him, not very fond of him. So I'm really liking that so far. The world in general is really cool. There's a lot of information about the world itself. And there's also moments where they kind of just explain a little bit about what they're talking about sometimes. I'll show you kind of like, I think how Babel is set out. I haven't read Babel yet, but um, from what I've seen, um, it does have like, definitions at the bottom and it's kind of the same here where there's like there'll be a star somewhere on the page and then down, down the bottom there'll be an explanation and it's generally about how what they say kind of relates to in the context of the world to do with fairies so yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm interested to see if people say it doesn't pick up until halfway like what actually goes on it's nice to see too like at the beginning of each chapter it will have the date of of the journal entry so you kind of see like in the timeline how much time has passed since the last journal entry each journal entry is a chapter so i really like how it's been set out it's quite nice one thing about this book too is i really really enjoy the descriptions in the writing like the world is so vivid you can really really picture everything that's happening you can really really picture the landscape and how everything looks just the vibe of the whole like world is just so really cozy and nice and it just is yeah like a really nice world to be in like the imagery that the author creates is really well done i think so yeah it's been quite enjoyable to read all the descriptions so, yeah i'll update you once i've read some more
I'm just here updating again where I'm up to. And I'm here with the cat on my left. She's just chilling. <laughs> just kidding, come here. So, yes, I'm currently on page, currently on page 211 of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Um, I am still really enjoying it. There's less of the cozy vibes as time's gone on. I think it's because the story itself has picked up. I definitely understand what people are saying when they say that Things don't really start happening until halfway through the book. Yeah, things have definitely been happening, like forcing the characters to into action rather than just like kind of lazily exploring the world and that kind of vibe. I I did actually really like it though. So I'm kind of I kind of wish it kind of stayed a little bit like that, but I guess for narrative purposes you can't just have a narrative be stagnant even though that's <laughs> the vibe I was feeling um anyway it's really good there's a character in here named Wendell he's Emily's um he's Emily's colleague and he's such a great character um you learn a lot about him and just about their dynamic Emily and Wendell's dynamic it's hilarious it's so funny he's honestly like the star of the book to be honest like I would just honestly really love to read a book from his perspective he's like he's just so funny and like his quips that he comes back at Emily with it's just like their banter back and forth pretty much I love their banter and he's a very different character to Emily Emily is very much a anti-social character really doesn't like talking to people is kind of just there to learn things she's not there to make friends and there's some of her backstory that they're hinting as like there's reasons why she's like that but they've not really revealed that and already quite a fair way into the book like got just like a third probably left so yeah there's not really a lot actually that we learn about Emily herself I feel like we're actually learning more about the other characters in the story rather than Emily the main character because I think the nature of the character herself like she's quite a close-off character I really like the writing I like how Heather Fawcett decided to write this story in the language that's used there are a lot of words that I actually don't know the meaning of I'm having to do a lot of googling um, I'm really interested to see where this story is going because they kind of have like a general narrative you know like you think okay they'll do this they'll do this and then they'll get these are the wants that they've been wanting throughout the whole book and then they'll get that and then that's the book. But I feel like there's something else that should happen. So I'm hoping that it does. I don't know. I feel like there's a hidden... I feel like there's something else that's going to happen in this book that we haven't like started that climax yet of the novel. So there's no ending in sight. Like we don't know. I at this point don't know how it's going to end. So I think that's good as well. That keeps me reading, keeps me um, engaged in the story because I want to know what happens. Even though the main character herself really is not a social person, she still is beginning to engage more with the people within the community and we're just learning more about them in general. And the dynamics, the introduction, like as Wendell came in later in the story he kind of acts as like the so the social lubricant for Emily and for the townspeople to be more integrated into their small town rather than being on the outskirts so I like seeing all the I do like the characters or the town characters I think it actually would there's just so much to learn about this world like I think it would be so interesting to learn even more about just the townspeople. It just feels like 
this book is scratching the surface of the possibilities for this world that it's created um just with like the depth of all the like fairy lore and the basically just purely the information about fairies and then the town itself how the fairies interact with the town itself and there's a long history of that I don't know I feel like I'm going off on a tangent because it's a world that can definitely be explored more I don't know if there are any more books planned but I feel like it's definitely possible even if it's just like a companion book like maybe we're still following Emily but then maybe it's a different part of the world they're on a different adventure I don't know like different fairy lore because like the way it's described is that fairies are different in every location of the world. So they're just like endless possibilities as to what you could create. I'm pretty sure I'll finish it soon because it's really, really hooked me. I feel like a book hasn't done this in a while for me. I don't know if it's because I've been kind of in something what you would call a reading slump I haven't really named it as that even to myself because I was in denial maybe <laughs> I don't know um but I feel like I've not really been like fully engaged in reading for a while I'm not really like yearning to pick up a book and like read it all in one sitting for quite a while um there's been a few times where it's happened but like not often partly is because like I'm very much a mood reader and sometimes I'll be reading a book and then honestly halfway through the book my mood will change and so I will want to read different genre even though I haven't finished the book so then finishing the book feels like it's kind of like a chore which is not good because reading shouldn't feel like that. So I'm really happy that this book is feeling like I'm really excited to continue reading and I'm still in the mood to read it. The book club that I've joined of the youtuber that's reading this book for this month just released their review video and <laughs> they really did not enjoy it <laughs> I don't know why I'll probably watch the video after I read this just in case there are spoilers but that was kind of sad that they didn't even enjoy it it just may not be people's tastes I don't know but like I said I'm really enjoying it okay I've just read the synopsis on the back again and I think maybe I know where this is going towards the end. I, yeah, I'm, I have a lot of high hopes for the end of this book because I feel like so far it's been really great. But for me, like the defining factor of a book is always how it ends. And then like the feeling you have when it ends, like sometimes you read a book and you just feel like it's underwhelming not what you expect you felt like they could have done a better job at wrapping it up and it can really influence the overall view of the book you have so I hope it's good <laughs> I'll update you once I've read a little bit more I have actually finished Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I think it's a really pretty book and it's sad because it had a really disappointing ending. <laughs> I felt like the last section of the book since the last time I spoke roughly around a third of the book left to a quarter of the book left I feel like it all just fell apart. <laughs> the like 
obviously like I said up until then I love the world loved the world building the characters were being developed quite slowly and which I really enjoyed it was really nice and I think it was match the personalities of the characters like especially the main character Emily where she's quite a closed off person but then so actually none of the payoff happened <laughs> that I was talking about earlier about learning more about Emily and her personal life didn't happen there was a moment that happened between the characters really what it was was just something that was like no build up whatsoever like the characters were not developed enough for that to happen. There was no setup of any sort for them to reach that point. It was just really weird. And then everything from there was downhill. Like, just so, so odd. I think the frustrating thing is the other characters in the story were great. Like, the villagers, I really enjoyed their characters. But then when it came down to the main character, I feel like the, like, we as readers really really let down with just like how little actually went on and a lot I felt like it was not really about her own self-development it really felt like this book was written in two parts it felt like the beginning of the book was written and then the end of the book was written so the author wanted them to match up somehow and it kind of just seems like they were like, okay, how can we make these two connect to make them a full story? And then whatever else happened in between there was like really rushed and it didn't do any of the story justice whatsoever. It made everything that came after that seem like something I didn't honestly really even care about. <laughs> also the tone of the last section of the book I felt like, kind of felt quite juvenile. The first start of the book felt a bit more adult, but then the last section of the book really felt like middle of the range YA, as in like 15 year olds, like was written about 15 year olds. I think in the end, it actually f made Emily seem like quite an unlikable character, which like is not what you want for the main character of the story. At the end, it actually says that Emily Wilde will continue in book two if there's the chance to learn more about the fairies and in other parts of the world like just learning about the world itself I think I would really really love to watch watch I think I'd really enjoy learning more about the world but honestly I would only really read it for the world itself I think the characters or maybe even hope that it's not Emily Wilde that the story is narrated by which seems a bit unlikely seeing as her name's in the title but I feel bad like critiquing this in this way because then I'm gonna put it on YouTube and then maybe people will watch it and I don't want to be the person like spreading negativity about a book I just feel like the people who edited this story should have seen that and said something like the writing was so condensed like earlier on in the story it's so stretched out and there's like pages of her wandering the woods and stuff like that but it felt like such a pinnacle moment in the book was reduced to a couple of pages so it was quite a letdown <laughs> i think i like thinking of the book as in like the first three quarters is like one book and then the rest of the half there's another book that i don't really care about i feel like before this i probably would have said it was like four four and a half stars for this book generally i've always placed star ratings on the books that i've read but lately probably the last six months or so i've been finding that star ratings aren't really don't really like accurately portray how i feel about a book because there's some aspects you can feel where you're obsessed with this one aspect but you can understand maybe technically that it doesn't deserve like a higher rating or maybe there are some books where you really really feel emotionally attached to it and you know like technically it's not like an amazing book but like you'll still give it five stars anyway or there are books where you feel like it is technically amazing but then when it comes to the story you maybe didn't quite connect to it too much and I feel like for me it's hard to decide 
sometimes it changes depending on the book like what I want to rate it like sometimes if they are written amazingly and I just didn't really fully connect to it I don't feel like it's necessarily fair for me to rate it low even though like I personally didn't connect to it initially I probably would have rated this book maybe like four and a half stars which is like quite good rating from everything that happened in the last section I feel like that deserves about like a two rating <laughs> so I don't know what I want my final rating to me just that I think like overall the ending really really didn't hit the mark in my opinion from someone who is studying editing and story structure and narrative I feel like didn't hit like the climax as well as it should have had because it's a setup was a bit underdeveloped. I wish this was like a draft. If it was a draft it would have so so much potential and all I would ask was to just fix that section. I would honestly say just make it longer. Like make that section be extended a little bit more to match the pace of the rest of the novel and like focus more on the character development rather than just like trying to follow the story and hit the plot points. But yeah this is what we have <laughs> thank you so much if you stuck around for this long because it was quite a long one um but it was really fun to film i feel like filming these keeps me accountable to actually read the book i feel like i probably would have stretched this one out for quite a while to read because i think like the time it takes to read a book and sometimes dissuade me from actually reading a book which is really weird so thank you so much for watching. Um, you can check out my Instagram below if you want to check out my bookstagram account or chat or anything like that. I would love to hear about literally anything about books to be honest. Um, please let me do know in the comments if you've read this book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, and if you've read it, like did you feel the same about the ending? Subscribe if you would like to. Um, I will be definitely posting more videos book related, anything book related. I'm really enjoying this. It's quite fun. Again, thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>